Hello everyone, welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining about two most important APIs of Unix system programming that is FCNTL and LSEQ API. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. And please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to share the video with your friends. So let me begin the explanation of FCNTL and LSEQ API. So the FCNTL function is going to help the user to set a flag or it can be also used by a user to query about the flags. That means if you want to know whether the flag is set or not, is going to uh, check with the uh, values using the FCNTL function. Uh, in simple words, uh, for a file, I can uh, set some flags like uh, I can set flag for uh, permissions, read permissions, write permissions, right? So if I want to change that flag values, I want to change the permissions of the file, right? I can change the value of the permissions using the FCNTL function, right? And also if I, if I want to know, if I want to know about the values of the flag that is set, I can use that FCNTL function to know the values that are set, right? And also along with that, I can use close on execute flag of any file descriptor. Close on execute means after the execution, right? Uh, right? It should be closed, right? Any file, uh, any command or any file should be closed after the execution. That values also can be accessed through FCNTL file descriptors. So here is the prototype of the FCNTL. So generally, uh, FCNTL function contains two arguments, but the third argument uh, can be also used, right? Uh, the first argument is this: the file descriptor. You know that uh, flag can be uh, FCNTL is purely related to the files. Flags can be set to files. If you want to know what are the flags that are set to a particular file, if you want to change the fl uh, flag values, you can use FCNTL. But to, ch to know what file it is, you need an address. So file descriptor is like address of the file, right? So uh, file descriptor contains the address of the file. So that is the first argument. The second argument is the command. So it is going to specify what operation has to be performed. For example, uh, how you are going to set a flag or, or else if you want to remove the flag, those things, what are the operation you need to be performed, those things are defined in the second argument. The third argument is purely dependent on the second value, right? So based on the um, command value, you are going to take the decisions in the third argument. That is a special case, right? So now we will see the possible values that are defined in fcntl.h header suppose for example see here f underscore get fl so it is going to return the access control flags of a file descriptor so if you want to know right the values of the access control flags access control flags means uh, these flags uh, may contain uh, the values related to permissions like uh, uh, whether a user can read the file access access means uh, whether he can read it or whether he can write into the file those details can be set uh, right using the uh, get fl right so in the same way set fl set or clears access control flags that are specified in the third argument for example if we want to clear the values of the control flags for example, uh, O append and O non-block. If you want to uh, change the non-block to blocking type, or if you want to change any of these flags, read flag, write flag, you can do that using a set fl. Get fl is going to return the values. Set fl by using the set fl, I can change the values of the control flags. In the same way, get fd returns the close on execute flag right of a particular file referenced by the file descriptor if this get fd is written 
when the close and execute flag returns zero the flag is off close and execute flag is not activated for that particular file right if you want you can do that after the execution is completed if you want to close that particular file you can activate the close and execute flag right so if the return value is zero the flag is off otherwise it is on set fd in the same way if you want to set the close and execute flag or if you want to clear the previous value of the close and execute flag right you can do that using a set fd so the third argument to the fcntl is an integer value which is zero to clear the flag or one to set the flag if you want to set the close and execute flag one is the value if you want to clear the contents of the close and execute flag zero is the value and the last one dupfd that is duplication duplication means it's going to duplicate the file descriptor with another file descriptor it's going to like copying operation you can use the file descriptor duplicated file the uh, file descriptor right along with the original file descriptor here the third argument to fcmtl is a integer value which specify that the duplicate uh, file descriptor must be greater than or equal to that value here the duplicated file descriptor is created but the condition is that uh, the value of the duplicate descriptor must be greater than or equal to the original value right so here if this is uh, if the uh, if this is executed properly this is going to return the duplicated file descriptor right getting guys so hope you are understanding here fcntl is mainly used to check the flags that are set to the particular file here okay for example access control flags right so if you want to know what are the permissions for a file access permissions like read permission write permissions you can do that using a get fl if you want to set that to the if you want to change the flags you can use the you can do that using a set fl right if you want to know close on execution flag is uh, on or off you can do that using a get fd right you can uh, clear the value of the close on execute flag using a set fd if you want to create a duplicate file descriptor you can do that using a dupfd right guys right and also the fcntl function is useful in changing the access control flag of a file descriptor i already told you right so for example see after file is opened for blocking read write access right so if file here in this example file is opened for blocking read write access in the, it is in the blocking mode right uh, and the process needs to change the access to non blocking and in write append mode it can call you can see it now the uh, the file what is uh, now I, the process wants to change the blocking read write access to non blocking and also write append mode you can see there how i can do that means i am using a fcntl right file descriptor set fl along with that i'm uh, i told you set fl means what if you want to clear the access control flag or if you want to uh, uh, right uh, give the new value how you can do that using a set fl that's why i'm using that uh, set fl command what is the value i am giving the third argument i give i should give the value to that uh, set fl right i'm giving non blocking value and o append value so o append uh, those flags i explained in the previous video you can go through it if you want uh, more information about that uh, uh, append and uh, read write flags right so here uh, so far you should know that fcntl right what it is doing here it is changing the flag from blocking to non blocking so how we can do that using uh, the how i can do that means i can do that using a set fl flag that is the second argument first argument is the file descriptor third argument i already told you it is value uh, the value is depend on the set fl right command so o append and non block i am changing from blocking mode to non blocking mode and also right i am changing from read write access to o append right so if you want to know more about o append you can uh, refer my previous video right so here you can see the following example reports the close on execute flag first i will 
check the value of the close and execute flag here then i'm going to set it to the on getting guys first i'm going to get the value what it is actually there in the close and execution flag once i get the value i'm going to set it to the on state see here so close and execute flag get fd you know that get fd why i use uh, get fd to get the status of my close and execute flag so in the c out statement i'm uh, right i'm printing the status close and execute flag uh, i'm uh, along with printing i'm uh, checking the status of the close and execute flag using the f underscore get fd right so first what i told i will right i'm going to check the status of the close and execute flag that is the first statement next what i will do i will have to change the status of the flag to on state see so what i will do means fcntl f disk f set fd1 yeah see here file descriptor i want a file descriptor mainly to i want the address of a file right where i want to on the close and execute flag right that's my first file descriptor i need the address of the file i will fetch from the file descriptor so second what is the command set fd set fd why i use you can see here set fd why i use means mainly to set the value of the close and execute flag to clear the old value and to set the uh, new value to the close and execute flag i can use set fd and remember one thing if the flag is set what is the value should be value should be 1 to set the flag 0 should 0 to clear the flag but what is the value of set ft to set the flag 1 1 right so you can see here so what is the third argument value the third argument value is 1 because i am turning it on that's why getting guys hope you are understanding suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section right next uh, this following statements is going to right show you about how we are going to change the standard input of a process to a file called foo that means i can give the input from the file also it is possible you can give the input from the standard terminals like keyboard and mouse also so far you know that you can give the input using a a standard uh, keyboard or a mouse but if you want to give the input from the file also it is possible in unix how i am going to do that see here first you can see here int file descriptor is equal to open foo read only i am opening a file called foo for reading purpose it's very simple so next what i am doing i am closing the standard input close of zero i am closing the standard input next so what i am doing means i want to get the input from the file now so that's why standard input from foo now how i am doing i am using a fctl for this so what is the first argument file descriptor F dupe dupe i am using here dupe why i am using do 50 do 50 is mainly used to write duplicate the file descriptor I am doing that, right? Mainly to do duplicate the file descriptor. I am using dupe fd. So command is zero. You can see it was dupe fd zero means what? The return value of the fcntl is what duplicated file descriptor. So it is going to return the duplicated file descriptor. Now I want to. I am checking for the error uh, whether it is uh, working for. That's why I am comparing with the minus one p error fcntl if it's not uh, proper if the file descriptor is not there it will return error otherwise what it is doing it is reading cc it is foo i'm declaring the size 256 buffer buffer size so i'm setting the standard input from foo now yeah now after the standard input is set i'm doing a read count see buffer comma 256 I am reading the data from the foo. What is the size of the foo? 256. Next, first I set the input for, uh, to the file called foo. Next, what I am doing? I am reading. That's why RC is nothing but read count. I am reading from 0 to 256. Where? From buffer. Getting guys, standard input now. 
is the, from the file not from the actual input what you are understanding next the dupe and dupe to function in unix perform the same file, file duplication function as fcntl if you want to use dupe or dupe to also you can use it to duplicate the file descriptor instead of fcntl it is also possible see here you can see dupe file descriptor dupe to file descriptor 1 comma ft2 you can see there i am duplicating the file descriptor ft2 here duplicated file descriptor is what fd2 i am doing that instead of that i can do that using the fcntl also you can see there in the right side uh, example fcntl file descriptor file duped 0 close fd2 you can see there i am duplicating the file descriptors using dupe and dupe2 or else i can use fcntl also hope you are understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section right next i will move on to the lseek so seeking means in a simple words if you want to move from one position to another position in a file you can do that that is seeking in a simple words so the lseek what it is what it's going to do the lseek function is also used to change the file offset to a different value file offset the address where you want to move from where which place to which place you want to move if you want to change that uh, positions of the file you can do that using a lseek function see here the lseek allows a process to perform random access of a data of any opened file random access you can move from any position to any position in a opened file how you can move from one position to one position in a open file means by using a lseek function seeking means you can move from one place to another you can do that randomly you can move from one place to another place in a file the prototype of lseek is what you can see there the uh, three arguments are there first is the file descriptor second is the position obviously position is the necessary argument here and the third one is the vehens right we will see this argument in detail now on success this uh, lseek uh, prototype it's going to return new offset file offset on success that means new position is going to return on success otherwise minus one on error right so you can see here the first argument file descriptor is an integer file descriptor that refers to an open file if you want to it is like address of a file you know that right the second argument is a position so what it is going to do it specify a byte offset to be added to a reference location in deriving the new file offset value right so position so it is going to tell the actual position where the l6 should takes place the third argument is the reference location right so for example you can see the values for that uh, hence see see cursor current file pointer address reference from where you have to start where you have to start the right actual uh, seeking position is going to tell how much should be added that means how much movement should takes place that is uh, there in the position but uh, this third argument is going to tell from where it is like a reference from where you have to start for example seek cursor uh, you should start from current file pointer address uh, current address is uh, where it is you have to start from there seek set from the beginning of the file seek and the end of the file right you can start you can take this as a reference you can start the seeking hope you are understanding guys and all these values whatever the values we discussed now seek cursor seek set seek and all these are defined in the unistd.h header and one more important thing if an lc call will result in a new file offset that is behind the current end of the file two outcome pass two outcomes are possible that means if you are moving from right if you are moving from one position to another position in such a way that it is uh, it is more than the end of the file uh, the offset value is more than the end of the file suppose if your file size is 256 right the lseek value can't 
the offset value is 256 the l6 can't go behind 256 that is the threshold if it is like that two outcomes are possible if it is going to move beyond the end of the file two outcomes will possible what it uh, what happens if a file is open for read only l6 will fail obviously uh, you can't read that uh, the, uh, the whenever the contents are there in the file that should be within the uh, end of the file only it can't be more than that that's why seeking will fail but if the file is open for write access l6 will succeed why why so write means you can change the uh, offset values right that's why you can change it and you can uh, you can change the end of the file uh, value and you can continue with the right operation but reading you can't do that read only means you can't make the changes write only means you can make the changes that's why l6 can succeed hope you are understanding right it is possible if you are if you are writing you can change the offset value and you can continue it even if it is reaching the end of the file but in reading it's not the case and one more important thing the data between the end of the file and the new file offset address will be initialized with null characters right so whatever the extra the data between the end of the file and the new file offset address the extra space will be initialized by the null characters hope you are understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section